your uh, house keys in your door. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. William. I, I, I did I, not do that. That's my son, William. He, you, William. I have him on the weekends. I'm sorry. I, I forgot what your name is. Anthony. Anthony, okay. Yeah, yeah I, I remember um, when I was uh, signing up for the apartment, uh, Benny introduced us, and I, I totally forgot him. I'm like, I remember his name. He's so nice too. Uh, I remember people's names, but usually, like I keep my distance from people. Like, I know that forever, so it takes me like a, which is just just a lot of people are assholes. So yeah. That's why I'm like that, I guess. Yeah, I kind of keep to myself usually for the most part, as you've seen. He's the only person besides the exterminator and the uh, maintenance guy that's ever been here. <laughs> so. I was fighting for like a real long time to like between Benny, Benny's just like, oh, call the police and police are like, oh, well, you have to talk to your landlord or we like, you know, they, yeah, police that's don't do exactly what they did to me. So then I start fighting with the police and through like the last couple years of my life, all I do is fight with the, uh, the courts and the police because they don't do shit right at all. Yeah. And, and. I'm at the point now where I'm just like sick of fighting and I'm moving. So like, I don't know when it's going to happen. I had a house in Florida that I had my offer accepted on, but I backed out at the end of the contract for like, I didn't like how my eight, my real estate agent was handling everything. And, and also I kind of got cold feet a little bit too. like move. Like I, I lived in Scranton since I was uh, 18. Oh, and I'm wow. 34 now. Uh, so I know, like, especially the last couple of years, like, I know a lot of people around here. Like, I know, like, if I need anything, who to go to, like, yeah. for car work or whatever. I'm like, all right, if I move to Florida, I have to start all over again because I don't know anyone and whatever, you know. So, but, Florida's a weird place, too. I almost moved down there, there when I was younger. Have you been there? To Florida? Oh, yeah, a couple times. Really? Yeah. What part? Uh, well, when I was real little, I went to Orlando uh, with my parents, and when I was about 20, I went down to uh, Miami Beach. Yeah, I'm thinking, like, I want to move somewhere like an hour radius of Orlando, but it's so hard to find houses now, because yeah. the housing market is insane. Like, I've been watching it for a couple months. And as soon as a house shows up on Realtor.com or any of the websites, within like two or three days, an offer is accepted on it. And they end up, like I haven't watched them. It usually takes like two to three months for them to actually get sold. Okay. So I haven't watched That's, them wow. through the whole process. Cause like, That's uh, not bad at all. With loans and everything, yeah. it takes the most amount of time and appraisals and everything like that. But if, I mean, their, their market must be hot if they're selling things in two to three months. And, and the offers, keep like, all the houses, even I looked in West Virginia and in North Carolina as well, and uh, houses that sold like two, three years ago, mm -hmm. now they're listed for like 40, 50 grand more than they sold for a couple years ago. Well, and people are buying at that price. When I was six, well, when I was like 14, me and my father moved down to Virginia about 45 minutes outside of DC and 45 minutes outside of uh, Richmond. So right in between the two, we paid $2,500 an acre. We had 54 acres. Um, about 10 years ago, 25 acres and the house sold for over a million dollars. And of course I got screwed out of the property when he died because my father didn't like to pay bills. Uh, so like yeah. it got sold and went to taxes and whatever. Yeah, everything got sold for like 40 grand. Wow. And we had a brand new 1600 square foot house, but like that's how much the land's gone up because you know, it's a great area. You're right in between like, yeah. but like when he's 18, <clears throat> um, wait, how old were you when uh, you and your dad had that property and everything? Uh, 14 to 16. Okay. So I'm 40 now, so that's 24 years. Like when he turns 18, we're going south somewhere. Um, I have a buddy out in western Tennessee. I might go out there because, uh, you know, there's work out there. Uh, the land's still cheap. They have special programs to help get people out there, like special mortgage programs. Yeah. Why, why until he's 18? Because of school here? Or? Uh, well, he lives with his mom. Oh, okay. 
Or at least he will. He does until uh, he turns 16, then I'm suing her. Because at 16, uh, the courts let him choose. And he doesn't want to live there. I don't know what's going on, but... Well, I'm sorry for that situation. I it's never, for him. never a good situation, you know, like divorce and all that family shit. I don't know. It's probably better that we got oh. separated. Like, we were just terrible for each other, but... Um, I don't, he has problems. It's a crazy thing. Like, she wound up... Uh, dropping him and his sister off at her sister's one day and just bounced. She was like homeless for a month, uh, got knocked up by another guy. So yeah, it's a whole big thing. What attracted you to this woman? I drank a lot when I was younger. <laughs> hey, I've been there too. I've made mistakes. Now, now I, I haven't had a girlfriend in a long time, but cause I try to be more responsible now yeah. than I was back then. Yeah. So, I don't but, have any kids, but I yeah, could have had kids with, with some uh, pretty bad people. Yeah, I'm looking at, um, if I don't go out to Tennessee, maybe South Carolina, not too far out of Charleston, um, possibly North Carolina. Yeah, I was looking into, uh, so my requirements, my number one requirement is I wanted to live in a state that didn't have a front license plate. Because I didn't want to put one on that car and... and oh really, yeah, you don't even have a thing for it. Yeah, yeah, there's no holes or anything. I bought that car uh, brand new. I had it ordered, like, from Germany. They made it, took my order and everything. Like, because you... It's not, like, any anything special. It's not, like, a special paint or anything like that. But you can go to the car dealerships and they'll build you a car with the exact options that you want. So that hmm. instead of just going to the dealership and say, like... Say you want a car with the sunroof, but none of the dealerships around here have a car with the sunroof, and you have to drive like a thousand miles or whatever to find one. We can have one made at the factory instead. Oh wow! I thought they just shipped them from another dealership. Uh, they could if they have them in stock, but this car is like, I, I don't know how many of them are made, but it's not like it's not like a minivan or something. That's yeah. Well, I can hear when you start it up, it's not like a regular BMW. <laughs> oh, yeah, I've been exhaust on it and everything. It's not too loud or anything, right? Like, uh, I, I try mean, to leave I during the daytime, and I know, I like, really... your bedroom's right there, right? Uh, it depends. Because um, I have, you know, it's just me in the apartment. I have a bedroom back there, and then I have the front room, which I can't use because of... Yeah, that's um, where my bedroom is, is on the front top over there. Is it? Yeah. Well, not, no, not not on the front on this side. Oh. On the other, I live I live up and on the other side. Oh, okay. Yeah, so like he's here and then I'm, I'm on the other side. Mm. So my bedroom is right on, on the other side of the house there. So. Now I'm usually, I'm usually up when uh, you leave. Yeah, I try to only leave during the day and I stay home most of the time. Yeah. More anyway, so. Nah, no, you, you're totally good. I mean, I, I've i never had a problem with neighbors, like, you know, no, people, he's... there's there's noise, and like these apartments, the walls are paper thin, you know, there's a way to, I don't know, I just think it, no, the way to do it like... is to say, look, you're being a little noisy, can you keep it down, you know? Like, I've had problems with tenants in that house, in that apartment before, and I've asked them, like, oh, if you want to, like, I ask them to go to this side of the house because it's like my office is there and my bedroom's there and a lot of them always comply or whatever they're like oh yeah it's cool or whatever but he just doesn't want to do anything like whatever whenever because back when he first moved in I had my air conditioner uh, in the front window up there and he smokes on the front of there and yeah. I quit smoking like years ago because that shit's just horrible yeah so but all that smoke got sucked into my air conditioner then blew out through my whole apartment and the first time like I walked out I'm like hey man can you like smoke in the back porch or something because my air conditioner is right there like I was real calm about it or whatever he's like what the fuck are you talking about like my, my smoke's not going over there you're making all this shit up Sounds and he starts right. like screaming at me and I'm like okay man like I just turned around and walked back into my apartment and then I asked Benny and Be and uh Benny didn't do anything about it so I'm like all right well I can put like a shower curtain right there on the uh, balcony 
but at that time, because he moved in, I think, in August or something, so I was taking my air conditioner out. Oh, this year? Yeah. Oh, wow, so he moved in right before me. Mm -hmm. Huh. Yeah. Uh, he acts like he owns the place or something. But I thought he's been here for a while. Uh, I've been here since September 2015. They've been here, uh, I, don't, I don't know, maybe 17, 2017. They just moved in right around you guys too. Before that, there was uh, a black family that lived there uh, that moved in around the same time that I did. And me and them were like super close and everything. Like We'd hang out in the backyard and have barbecues and yeah. everything like that. So that really sucked when, when they moved. But, uh, but yeah, then this girl over here moved in around the same time you, you did as well. Oh, okay. So. I've never actually seen her. I saw her like like I have cameras. I see her like on cameras sometimes, but I think she just keeps to herself and goes to Nothing work. Nothing wrong with that. She yeah. can be like loud. Do you, like I hear her music every once in a while, but I don't care. You know. Like I said, I mean, unless it's like like in in, in the morning, it's like boom boom, and like I don't hear that kind of shit the rest of the day. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah, I think it's like. I know it's when he gets home from work, he's on the phone like screaming at someone or whatever, like all the time, I don't know who it is. And then when both of them are together, they just get into random arguments mm. at whatever fucking point. Yeah. But yeah, I like the only other option or one of the options that I had was because you can withhold rent. Yeah. And that's what I was thinking of doing. But then if Benny, because I think what happens with him, like, like either me or you complain to Benny, and then he hears about it, then gets aggressive towards us. Right. So I think if we withhold rent or something, then that's just going to further his aggression towards us. Yeah. Well, like, the reason, like, when I told Benny, um, and when Benny told him, told me to call the police, I'm like, they're not going to do anything, but I called them just because, like, if he does come down and try to kick in my door, I want it on record that I reached out to the police, I reached out to the landlord, you know? Yeah. But. Yeah, yeah. and it sucks, like, if you defend yourself or whatever, like, say that this guy attacks me and I have to pull out my knife or do something to get him away from me, then I have to fight in court for, like, years to prove there was self-defense. Because you don't, uh, in Pennsylvania, well, I don't, I don't know how it would work for you, but because he's so much bigger than me, I can, uh, use to stand my ground that... Oh yeah, I yeah. can use that too, but, like, I've argued that with the cops, and, because, uh, <clears throat> I don't remember if I was telling you when we were up front, but, uh, when that happened, when I was shoveling snow and the cops yeah. came, the Detective McLean told me that... Uh, I don't have the right to pull out my knife because he was just using fists against me and fists aren't deadly force and I'm like what that's, that's not consistent not the, with the law yeah so I think like what and I think what they're trying to do is just like not address the situation and think they think that just like keeping your distance and not and avoiding each other is the right solution but like, if I'm out here shoveling snow, what am I supposed to do? Like, am I supposed to wait like until he leaves to shovel snow? Like, I'm not gonna build my schedule around around right. him. You know, like that's not really reasonable thing to do. So, but but it's just that. And then with with all the different tenants that move in between, because Benny owns that house too. Yeah, like, I remember him saying. I always get I when I get close to the tenants and then they move away like I get really sad about that and then uh when there's issues with tenants or whatever and I have to argue with Benny or or I, I used to just talk to the tenants themselves or whatever like go face to face and talk to them and if no one's aggressive that's that's totally fine what I think it should be yeah yeah uh but those are like the main reasons why I just like, it's better for me to move because if I move and have my own house then there's other people who have their own houses so if I'm close to them they're not just gonna move after like a year lease well, or whatever like I'm, I'm not used to just like people moving in and out constantly like I don't know I've, I've I haven't owned a house since uh 
shit since he was like three. I owned a house in Tobihana and, you know, uh, we lost it in a recession. Um, but, you know, I'm not used to like neighbors coming and going like crazy. You know, it's. Yeah. Uh, there was something I was going to say, but, you know. But yeah, speaking of recession, that's another thing that I worry about with buying a house now is because prices are so high that it's not going to be sustainable and that, uh, no. like, I'm afraid that banks are giving out loans because the interest rates are so incredibly low right now for mortgages and everything. It's like 2-3% uh, that people are ending up, going to end up getting uh, mortgages on houses that are way more than they're worth and, and because all the prices are elevated because everyone's moving and there's, we're in a housing bubble right now and then in a couple years the house once all this dies down the house a three hundred fifty thousand dollar house is going to be worth 250 so then now your house isn't worth enough to cover the mortgage yeah, you're underwater yeah so well, I mean, I, well, during the recession i literally worked i did it for a mortgage company in new york city yeah. so like i saw the subprime collapse like, because what we would do is we would uh, sell mortgages, we'd issue them, and then we would sell the mortgages. We'd bundle them, sell the securities, and all of a sudden, one day, they're like, secondaries just shut down. We can't sell our mortgages, and like oh, our business you're model the, is screwed. You're using the mortgages as collateral to... Yeah, <clears> no, what they were doing is they were taking all the mortgages, and they would be rated, you know, you have your grade A or whatever, and they would bundle them so into a, a security. Yeah, so grade A would be like the mortgages where they're most likely to get paid back. Yeah, and then you'd have like your trash mortgages, which were subprime, you know, the people with less than like a 620 to put 0% down, where they're really risky. And to make them more appealing, they'd take a good mortgage, they'd take a crappy mortgage, put them together, and sell them as a security, basically like a stock. So that the idea was you bundle them so many times nobody can figure out what's actually in them mm -hmm. yeah all that stuff gets like way too complicated for me like like i know investing and i, I work in investing and everything like that but once everything gets like so far in advance i'm like all right i'm out of this because it's way too complicated for me to understand because i have to calculate like the risks and everything if i'm going to invest in all that yeah when it gets so complicated, I'm like, well, if this happens, if that happens, but I don't really understand this enough, and whatever. So, I know, like, when you were talking about the mortgages or whatever, I know there's a thing called rehypothecation, where, so, basically, uh, when you have a mortgage, the house owns, or the bank owns the house. So then that bank can put your house up as collateral to take out a loan of their own. So now the bank is using your house, your mortgage as collateral to take out their own loan. And then they use that loan money to invest elsewhere. Yeah. So, but that gets like really complicated because what if the bank defaults on the loan that they took out in your house's name? And then in that situation, uh, the creditor, when you all is said and done, the creditor is who gets the house, not the actual owner of the house. Hmm. So it's it's a really weird and complicated thing. Like I work in uh, cryptocurrency, like Bitcoin oh, and all okay. that stuff. And uh, one thing, uh, there's a website called BlockFi, but there's multiple different websites. But uh, but it works as you can think of like a savings account where you put in your Bitcoin and you get uh, paid interest on it. So say I put in one Bitcoin and the interest rate's like 6% or something. And what they do is they take that one Bitcoin and they loan that Bitcoin out to whoever wants a loan or whatever. The same way as banks do when you put money in a savings account or right. a CD or whatever. Banks loan out that money. But uh, there's the opposite side of this where you can put up your Bitcoin as collateral so I could give my Bitcoin to BlockFi and get a loan from them. So now they're holding, say they hold like $10,000 worth of Bitcoin and they'll give me like $7,500 in cash because there has to be uh, leeway in case yeah. Bitcoin price fluctuates or whatever. No, plus they have to make money, I'm sure. Yeah, so now they have the, my one Bitcoin 
and I have $7,500. So now they can take that one Bitcoin and use that as collateral of their own to take out a loan. And when, uh, now say that they default on the loan for my one Bitcoin to their creditor, well, that creditor sues them and it doesn't matter if I own that one Bitcoin, if I'm the actual owner of it, the creditor gets first dibs huh. when uh, bankruptcy happens or whatever. So they end up getting the Bitcoin before I do, even though I'm the actual owner. Realistically, I think it'll work out in a way where they'll get like 70% of the Bitcoin, I'll get like 30% or something like that, like when you actually argue in court, but creditors get first dibs on that. See, I thought whatever. the way it always worked in those cases, well, not so much with Bitcoin, I don't know much about that, but let's say like a mortgage where somebody uses it as collateral, I thought the creditor just gets rights to the mortgage, like to um, execute the mortgage. Like they own, because a mortgage is uh, like a security. You can buy and sell mortgages. Yeah, so that would be. They wouldn't necessarily get the house though. They get the mortgage. Yeah, they get the mortgage payments on the house. Yeah. Uh, but technically, they do own the house. Well, they yeah, the mortgage, yeah. Technically, so. they own the right to it. Yeah, and I guess it would be in their best interest to collect payments on the house instead of going through all the work trying to kick out the. Yeah. owner and selling the house and everything like that it's so, pretty much the same with banks when people can't pay their mortgages it's yeah. better in their better interest not to have it vacant you know banks aren't great at selling property but yeah that that's one thing that makes me scared about buying a house now is thinking years <clears throat> down the line the house that i buy right now might be worth a ton less in a couple years and Really, the way that I have to look at it is not look at my house as an investment. <laughs> well, because I, I, I always look at a lot of stuff as investments, and I really shouldn't do that because then I'm like, all right, well, I can't move now because I have to wait for the best time to buy. <laughs> well, look at it this way. Um, right now, you're giving money to Benny, and you're accruing nothing. Even if you go and you get a mortgage on a house I, and it yeah. drops in value, you're still accruing equity. Yeah, I'd be paying cash for a house. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> so <laughs> never mind that. It, it would. Uh, Actually, if you're, what, see, that's always a possibility of the price dropping, but certain markets are more prone to it, obviously. Um, so, like, I would say look at like the last ten years history of property values, or maybe even twenty. I mean, generally, it's always going to be going up. Just make sure it's not like... Yeah, especially with inflation. <laughs> yeah. So. Well, inflation's been good lately, surprisingly. I was telling my son, I'm like, do you realize the government spent more money on COVID relief in the last year than the national debt was when I was a kid? <laughs> yeah, they spent more than the national debt is in the last year. So, and, and like... The, it's crazy because like there's no way to pay back this money other than to print more money yep. or to make to higher taxes and all that happens with higher taxes is well we get stuck paying them and our children get stuck paying them so it's just like it's borrowing from the futures of our children putting our children in debt and everything so yeah it's, it's terrible I told him I'm like you might as well just learn Chinese now it's it's crazy. I I don't know if if it's gonna get to that point, but well, it won't it won't in my lifetime. I don't think. But his he's only fifteen. You know, give it another forty fifty years, things will probably be really bad. Because you know, all this money's gonna come due at some time. Yeah, it's it's been happening for like I've looked into it at least like a hundred years or whatever, and it just keeps it never gets better it just keeps getting higher taxes more more public funding and and all this stuff like it never taxes never seem to get lower or whatever <laughs> yeah. you know this is true i was thinking like if i ran for mayor here or something like that like i was thinking like it'd be all right here's a funny thing i was thinking of the other day because i always like as a kid i always got like shamed or whatever like it was always a bad thing to accept public assistance or welfare or whatever like mm -hmm. like that but now i'm looking at scranton taking in all this money from covid and and all this stuff from the government i'm like well why can't we shame scranton for doing it like 
if I have to be self-sufficient and uh, and profitable and reliable and all that, wh why isn't our city like put to the same standards as like they put us to pretty much? And they've been in a what is I figure out what the hell it's called. Uh, they've had some special uh, tax yeah, status in the state a, for like ten years. Yeah, it's uh, a economically depressed city, mm. so they get. Uh, they get like some special government funding or there tax also, status. Yeah, there there's something with the amount they're allowed to raise taxes too, which is why the income tax is so crazy and strange. Yeah, and then the mayor sued and won that case, and now they're allowed to raise taxes as high as they want. <laughs> I pay more in local taxes than I do in state. I don't remember what mine is. I know 2018, I paid $18,000 in taxes for the year. <laughs> But uh, that, change careers. <laughs> that was just like when Bitcoin was like really high in 2017 and everything. But uh, like, like my thought, like if I ran for mayor, instead of uh, instead of getting money for taxes, like I would do like fundraising and everything like that. Like if there's like a poor family that needs help, why can't we just fundraise to help them and and do our own part as a community to help them out or whatever. Well, that, that's the way it should be yeah, done, but... That's know. what churches have done for yeah. years and everything. And then, like, we get to lower tax rates and because we're not, like, dumping all this money into helping people on welfare or whatever. So... I don't think that would really work. I, I think if I did do that, I'd just get, like, ridiculed and, and whatever. Uh, proposing that plan because a lot of people depend on welfare and I'm like well I'm getting rid of welfare and then they're gonna be really mad at me right so. well I mean the thing about welfare is it was never meant to be like a permanent lifestyle it's supposed to be a safety net yeah but then the Democrats are like well if we just put out everyone on welfare and keep dumping them money well then they'll vote for us so then they get more money so. <laughs> how's that working out <laughs> Hey, who's president of Democrat? So yeah, <laughs> but I mean, look at state legislatures. <laughs> what do you mean? Most of them are Republican. Wow, this is the first time since I've lived here that I've seen a cop come down the street that I haven't called him. <laughs> oh well. <sighs> Let me get back to my son. Thank you so much. It was good talking with you. Make sure uh, you pay attention to your YouTubers. What's that from? Was it just up there when you moved here? Uh, yeah, I noticed it more and more. Like the front's like that too. The uh, the previous people that lived here, they would always get into arguments and stuff too. I know this window was smashed out. The door that goes to the stairs of yours out there, that door was smashed out too. Yeah, I can see because the whole frame is shot. Yeah. I just gotta fix it. But. All right, thank you very much and take care, Anthony.